Hello and welcome to this month's RC Racing. Well, I'm on my own here because John's off in the States and he's actually commentating on full-size sports cars. But we'll be hearing from him later as he talks us through the two remaining finals from the World Championships, including what was universally accepted as the greatest touring car race ever, the final leg of the World Championships. Before that, we're going to carry on with the story of the 112th world and also have a look at that strange new RC hobby, rock crawling, going slowly over bumps. What's that all about? And we've also done our great competitions, but this time, rather than answer your question, we want you to become the star. That's all coming up on this month's RC Racing. And now to Thailand for the conclusion of the 112th World Championships. Well, last month we saw Yuho Levenham of Finland hold off Naoto from Japan, the 14-year-old wonder kid, in the first leg. Well, the second leg was similar, but the results were reversed. And with this final being dominated by the tarmac surface and the fact that only those two drivers really had a chance of winning because of the tyres they had, let's now join leg three with everything to play for. But who will be world champion? Well, effectively, Nick, just the two associated drivers in it because, as you said, one winner piece, but also a second place a piece as well. So it is between these two for that coveted World Championship status. Everyone else, I'm afraid, is fighting for third position. And the first of them, Hubo Honigel, in third spot, the Austrian. Mark Reinhardt, well, he's still in with a chance. The German with the hot body machine there of four uh, in this final race for the 12ths. Fifth. Hideo Kitsawa, he is the third driver that is in with a chance of third overall. Uh, really, anybody back from here, and here's Gilles Grosskamp, well, they would have to have a bit of luck from other people ahead of them dropping out. Sibo Ananemi, well, has had the speed at times this weekend, but hasn't translated that into tremendous finishes. He's from seventh on the grid in eighth. Timo Linu, again, just showing us the display body. He'll be racing that orange car again, remember. Uh, ninth and 10th, Daisuke Yoshiko and Andy Moore will be looking to add to his points tally. Really not happy with the tyres, as many of the drivers this weekend. Well, the yellow car on pole position and the blue and white one behind are the two in with us. Andy Moore closest to us. But really, from 10th on the grid, he's not going to be influencing anything at the sharp end unless there's an absolute disaster in the early stages. And out goes Nioto Matsukura, the Japanese driver. He's you and already a problem there. Was that Kitsuara down the field who hit the barriers very hard? He has continued. But look at the lead from Nioto Matsukura with the associated. And there are still people scratching their heads at the pace of these two drivers at the head of the field. They have driven away and through the field in a World Championship final that just hasn't been seen, well, for such a long time. And clearly there's a huge advantage. A little mistake there by Levenant. Just got the car airborne and whatever tyres you've got on, however good they are, can't really do you any good when you're an inch and a half off the ground. But the 12th running on tarmac has really thrown the cat amongst the pigeons. It has favoured the Japanese drivers who do a bit of this. But quite clearly, the grip has been what has been at issue this weekend. And Nioto driving away from the field already. He's got himself a Reasonable cushion back to Lebanon in second. Now they're going through Timo Lino, commentator's friend there with the brightly fluorescent coloured machine with Andy Moore just beginning to put a bit of pressure on him. And here's Andy having a little look down the inside of the fin, can't get it done, but Andy really racing for pride here. he thought he had a little bit of an advantage they tested in these conditions on the tarmac but their tyres I'm afraid have not just not been up to the pace at the head of the field oh and off goes Andy just clips the inside here let's have a look no and there we are you see that's overheating tyres I'm sure problems on the rear end of that car lots of grip for Andy and he spins out of that battle with Timo Lino 
Now let's get back to the head of the field. That is the second place car, the white and blue machine. Trying to chase down the leader. That looks like Mark Reinhard behind. So Mark's having a slightly more decent run. There's the leader. Again, just flirting with disaster there. Young Nato. Just getting across these curves, which we have seen throughout these championships are somewhat unforgiving. Very tempting to straight line that portion of the circuit. But if you get just a couple of millimetres offline, easy to get airborne. Just here. You do have to wiggle a little bit. You can't just go arrow straight. So coming into the final stages now of this deciding leg of the 12th World Championships. And again, even with the temperature dropping as the sun goes down, it's still been a story of traction and grip. And just look at how Naoto Matsukura is carving his way through the field. He's putting laps on all of these top quality drivers. You haven't seen anything like this. This is sheer domination by the associated guys. Lebanon in second place. Hasn't been quite as close to his teammate, but he's beginning to get a bit of a wake-up call here. So he's fighting his way through traffic as well. That yellow rear end of the car making it relatively easy to spot. And you can just see when you look at the other cars how much more grip those two leaders have. They can pick their lines. And perfect example there as the blue and white car of Juho Levin and the Finn was just able to drive around absolutely top quality drivers who are struggling. Their cars moving around, sliding laterally as they're trying to hunt for grip, particularly in the faster sections of the circuit. Now, hopefully, Nioto Matsukura has paced himself well. Lebanon hasn't really been there to challenge. There's the leader. There's second going through. Oh, a little mistake, I think, there by Lebanon in second place, just for once, getting the rear end of the car out of line. And look at the gap. No one else in shot, and only his teammate, really, who's been able to live with him. Down into the last couple of laps now, and it's going to be... An impressive victory for the 15-year-old Nieto Matsukura. He's just got to keep it together. And there is the... Oh, there's the second-place driver. It looks like he's dumped. Yes, it looks like that car's going flat. You are level at the fin. He's going to struck. Well, he's been kind of lucky because his teammate has already gone through to start the last lap and is indeed now finishing... And I think that means he'll still be good enough for second place. 15-year-old, world champion. Thank you very much, gents. So the final and deciding leg with Matsukura winning it from Lebanon in second place. Hubo Honigal in third from Grosskamp fighting his way up to fourth position. Now, what does that mean for the final standings? Well, it's been a domination, hasn't it, by Naoto Matsukura. Two wins and a second place ahead of Juha Levenen. Despite dumping in that third leg, he was still good enough for a first and two seconds. Everyone else really in the wake of those two drivers. Honigal finally on the points, getting third position. Well, it's competition time again. And this time, we don't want you to answer a question. We want you to enter a clip. That's it, that's it, give me love, go on. Love the camera, want the camera. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nick Damon. You may recognize me from such TV shows as rcracing.tv and, um, uh. Oh, We've teamed up with our partners at HPI TV to bring you the chance to become a radio controlled TV star. Do you have an HPI car? Do you have a camcorder? Have you filmed your HBI car on your camcorder? Do something wacky and wild? Have you uploaded it to a favorite video sharing site? If so, we want that link. All you have to do is send us the link to where you've uploaded your fantastic and wacky clip to win at hbi.tv. You can win 
a Trophy 3.5, the latest and greatest way to run Rallycross Buggy. And the best clip will be shown on RC Racing TV. There's also going to be a whole selection of clips that you've been framed of radio control on the HPI site. So, get filming, get them up on the internet, and let's see just what you can do with your HPI car. So when you've filmed and upload your clip, send it to us at win at HPI. Dot TV. And now we return to Thailand for the final time for the climax of the World Championship meeting, the final leg of the Touring Car World. The third and deciding leg then, Hara at the front of the grid in pole position. Another win here and it's all down to him. Reinhard there in second place with a fifth and a second. Ronald Volker not out of it either, a second and a third, but really needs a win if he's going to go any further towards winning this championship. Victor Vilka, well, it's not going to be his championship this year. In fifth place, Hirosaka. What can he do with a first and a fourth? Sixth position, Andy Moore, seventh and fifth. Not even the best of the Brits at the moment. That acc accolade goes to the 15-year-old Elliot Harper with a great third in the first leg, backing that up with a sixth position in the last heat. In eighth. Local Thai driver, Main V, he won't be on the podium for the overalls. Ninth, Matsusaki Hiyoto and Gilles Grosskamp at the back for the Netherlands. So this is it. It comes down to this race. Andy Moore almost urging his car forward before even we get the go signal. And Hara leads away. There's all kinds of carnage in behind him, but the first three have got away clean. Hara, Reinhard and Volker. Victor Vilka's already dropped back a couple of places there. So he was involved again in that early... That, that's a great camera position there. I really see the speed. 62 and a half miles an hour on the speed gun going into that first corner. That's a skill speed of over 620 miles an hour. That's why these guys are so good, because their reflexes have to be absolutely sharp. And they're not on their own, as you can see. The leaders into the infield. 
Reinhardt can still win this world championship. He's telling Nick Damon that he was thought he was out of it and he was really racing for second, but a win in this final heat and the world would be his. So whether he is good to drive the conservative race, Carl wasn't really set up to his liking in leg two, but this looks better for the German. He's really hassling hard, isn't he? Hot bodies leading from Tamir in second. And we know that Reinhardt can get just a little bit testy if he feels he's being held up. He's not frightened of getting a bit physical with the nose of his car. That was the point there in that infield section in the first leg where he put the Japanese driver on his roof. And Reinhardt is right in the wheel tracks of Atsushi Hara. Very strong through here, the German. Likes the technical part of this course. A lot of drivers seeing this rather too much braking for their liking. But it has, I think, been a very successful layout. Certainly, we've had some cracking racing here. And Reinhardt, look how quick he is there. He's keeping the power on so late. Riding the kerbs. Risking getting the car sideways. This is the battle for the lead. Can't get any closer than that. Tremendous stuff. And Reinhardt just... Deciding that for that moment, discretion was the better part of Valor. Coming down to two and a half minutes to run. And the leaders have been locked together from the start of this race. And Sushihara with a first and a fourth position. Mark Reinhardt with a fourth uh, with a fifth, excuse me, oh, and a second, and he just gets up the inside. The crowd reaction was all you needed to hear there. That was very close to an action replay of what happened in the first heat between these two guys when they were battling for the lead. Reinhardt, though, managed to back out of it enough to give the leader a sporting chance there. Good driving by the German. But you can't deny that through those twisties, the German looks quicker, and he's trying even to shortcut... And again, there's a collective intake of breath from the very knowledgeable crowd here. And down the inside and almost alongside for a moment. Reinhardt's got the quicker car. No doubt in my mind about that now that the German has got the quicker car. But at the moment, he just can't take advantage of it. Great driving by Hara ahead of him. The key here for the Japanese driver is not to buckle under the pressure. He's got to just drive his own lines and try to keep his concentration then it's all down to Reinhardt in second there to make the move there's all kinds of battles going on further down the field but I daren't take my eyes off the lead again locked together first to the left then to the right Reinhardt's down the inside he's through he's through and just listen to the crowd you heard what they thought now let's have a look at this again that's right at the end of the manoeuvre down the inside well, you know what? It's a bit robust, but side-to-side -side contact, not too bad at all. I think Reinhardt had the corner there, and he managed to hold on to it. Oh, there's the mistake from Hara in second place. He's handed up back on his wheels. Well, that's just remarkable. Let's have another look here. Reinhardt, well, in fact, Reinhardt leaves a gap there. And I wonder, I'm, I'm going to take that back. I don't think that was a mistake by Atsushi Hara. I think he saw the gap. There's, look, you see the leader's gone a bit onto the curb, leaves the inside open. Hara thinks he can make it, but just misjudges the end of the curb, which sends him flying. Coming into the last half a minute of racing, and Mark Reinhardt, the German, has driven. An absolutely immaculate race. Put pressure on Paul Mann at Sushihara right from the start of the race. Found his way through into the lead. Robust, yes, but legal as well, I'm sure. The crowd loving the early part of this race. And then Hara looking for the gap down the inside to retake the victory. Just slightly misjudged on that red and white curb right in front of us now. And that is going to allow the German... Mark Reinhardt to come through for victory. Well, the margin here looks big, but I would say that's probably one of the best, if not the best, world championship races ever. Mark Reinhardt taking the congratulations.
So here is the result of the third leg. What an astonishing weekend of racing. Mark Reinhardt wins it by a second and a half from Ronald Volker in second. Victor Vilk come back up into third place ahead of Elliot Harper, who adds a fourth place to his third in the first heat. Atsushi Hara down in fifth. Bad news for him because when we look at the overall standings, well, we've already called Mark Reinhardt as the first ever double world champion. The German with a first and a second. Volker with two seconds is in second place overall. Nice bit of symmetry there for him. And quite amazingly, Hirosaka in third place with a first and a fourth edges out Hara of the overall top three. But what about this story? In fifth position overall, on the final standings, Elliot Harper with a third and a fourth place from a championship where he was only coming to have a little look and gain a bit of experience. Marvellous stuff. It's an excellent shampoo, Mark. Um, I don't know what to say. You told us you were going to be conservative. You weren't. You are world champion, the first person to retain it. How do you feel? I feel super great now. It was a hard fight in the last final. Everything could happen. Harper was on the pace of be world champion and... I think he deserved the same as me, and it's shit that he dropped back to fourth. I feel sorry for him because I think he was, him, him and me were pretty close all the time, so I feel sorry for him, but it was pretty good. How did you feel when you realized on the roster that you'd won? Yeah, it felt awesome. I mean, when I passed him, and I was a little bit struggling onto the straight, but then he, he flipped over, so I was a little bit free, so I could cruise around the last two or three laps, and... Uh, yeah, I'm super happy. Mark, brilliant. Well done. Thank you, Richie. Thank you. At Sushi, it can be a cruel game, can't it? Because one little flip and you not only didn't win the World Championship, but you weren't even on the podium. Yeah. I try. I tried to keep front of him, but he was pretty fast. And uh, he passed me, and uh, I tried to pass him again, but a little too much inside and a crash. But I tried to best, so I'm not disappointed this race. Despite that, you've had a fantastic year, haven't you? Yeah, very much. Very much a fantastic race this month. I hope we... I try to for the next ones. Thanks. Thank you. Second in the World Championship. You must be completely delighted. Yeah, we're really happy with my podium. Uh, wasn't sure if I make, can make it before the Worlds, and now it was competitive and really happy to have a podium. Yeah. If I win this one, it will be for me the, uh, one of the best titles ever. Well, that really was the most fantastic race and the most fantastic result. Multiple world champion, Mark Reinhardt. Well, that's all we've got time for here this month. Next month are the first of our famous best dogs. But a bit differently, we've got some new, rather funny and rather exciting stuff in it. So stay tuned. Next month, RC Racing. We'll see you then.